Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today we've got another gun gripe episode for you and today I've got a very special guest with me. This is Mr. John Lovell. You better say the, Mr. The warrior you poet. Say Mr. The warrior poet himself, the man, the legend. Shut up. When he walked <laughs> in the care. door, I saw his aura. Uh, it was an aura <laughs> surrounded him when he walked in the door. But anyway, we got John Lovell here with us today and this is a gripe that we've kind of had floating around in our minds for a little while, Chad and I have, but I thought this would be a great one for John because he is such a just sort of singular platform kind of guy in terms of, he, you know, he runs ARs, he runs, you know, he's got his pistol, he's got his rifle, and he's, he's so, like, tuned in to that one type of weapon system. So what do we run into when we, when we start talking about guys being sort of a jack-of-all-trades and master of none in the gun world? So like, what separates the, the hobbyist, collector, which I guess you could consider me, I'm sort of a multi-gun kind of guy. I mean, I, I'm a collector. You know, mm -hmm. I, I like to play around with a lot of different random guns. What separates the collector type, the guy that just likes to play with a little bit of everything, from the guy who's like the, let's just say, the fad kind of guy that has to, oh, this week I'm running a pistol caliber carbine as my bedside gun or this week i'm running a shotgun well it matches my you know. shoes yeah or, so, or it's a fashion yeah. accessory so where do That's these things funny. all come together with uh with this sort of thing when it when it comes to you know people in their in their mindset when it comes to mastering a platform versus just experimenting yeah right? so first off this room is crazy cool so walked in and man there's tons of have you shown them no this room? <laughs> dude there's a room of awesome. And so anyway, I don't know what most of this stuff is. Uh, I feel confident if I, you, you know, uh, you taught me how to shoot the 1865 musket there, you'd, I'd be able to be like, all right, I shoulder this and t give me some pointers. I'll be on my way. Hope, no, I don't know anything about that. But I, I, I'm not a collector. I, I don't even love guns. I like guns. Guns are nice. Guns are tools to me though. Like a, a uh, good AR is, uh, I feel like it's just an extension of my soul. I'm wired into that system and other platforms as well. But anyway, it's a tool for me. So I don't love guns. I admire this. I'm like, wow, this looks crazy. So uh, anyway, but uh, that's kind of that's kind of how I roll. I'm more interested in the fierce pragmatism of what equals better defender, better protector, better fighter. I'm interested in uh, building the holistic fighter. So when you say something like, Jack of all tri trades, master of none, uh, that resonates with me because uh, I'm not interested in just getting the coolest gun and even being the fastest, most accurate shooter. That That's per it. I mean, yay, I want to get the right gun. I want to get fast and accurate with it, but I'm interested in, uh, uh, to be a good fighter, I also want amazing situational awareness, surveillance, counter surveillance, reading of threat indicators, martial arts, which is both stand up and ground game, uh, martial arts with disarming of weapons, land navigation. Uh, I want to be good at all kinds of different stuff that's going to play in uh, to that. I want to be room clearing and small unit tactics and, uh, you know, uh, land navigation. I think I said that. A uh, uh, medical. There's tons of different stuff that for me goes into being the holistic fighter kind of operator dude so that I have a, a, just a ton of different skills that build into being a good fighter. And so, you know, as everyone's just talking about all the different guns, that's kind of a collector mindset. And I'm glad that there's guys like that because all of the data, you're going to know a lot more about guns than me. And I'll be able to leverage, you know, some expertise there and be like, all right, what do you like about this and this? And you'll dork out on guns in a way that I don't care to. Give me the bottom line. Sure. How does it affect me so that I can go kick doors better? And then, yeah, so just tell me what that is so I can take the masters of what they're good at so I can be the jack of all trades as a fighter. So sure. I think it's just a different mindset. Uh, and yeah, anyway. That's a very good point. You know, and, and I believe we can discuss a little bit of the military philosophy in that regard is that, you know, John comes from a military background, obviously, as, as do I. But the thing is, when you're in a military situation, and let's just say most military situations, you're going to go and you're going to draw your pistol out of the armory. You're going to draw your rifle out of the armory. And Uncle Sam is giving you a tool and you're, and you're given that tool to go do a job. And he's, it may not be the perfect tool, but it's a tool that you're given and it's a tool you have to master. Mm -hmm. And it is important to understand your rifle, your pistol. And from a military perspective, we, we often don't have the luxury of being able to go, well, maybe I like this better. No, you don't have a choice. This yeah. is your tool and you will master it. Yeah, and, and there's something to be said about that that I think is important. 
that you know sometimes a lack of choices leads yeah. to a more focused environment for you to be in related to that tool and understanding that this is my tool this is my job and I will perform my duty I'll perform my job to the best of my ability with my tool that That's I good. have uh, and I want to backpedal just a little bit because there is something that it's not like I know ARs and you know pistols and whatever else you do there is something to be said to being cross-trained in multiple platforms sure. I need to know the weapon systems of my enemies so I can pick up that SKS or you know uh, AK or and rock that or be able to uh, operate a ton of our different weapon systems, whether it's Mark 19s or 203s or, you know. I love uh, the Mark 19. Yeah, or 50s, <laughs> whatever. You, you got to be able to operate a host of different weapon systems. Sure. But the ones that we really major on, that I'll become a master at that, uh, there are so many different skills that I need to be cultivating. I just don't have a lot of time to be the absolute best at ever. You can't really do that. Uh, and so I want to spread around to be really, uh, you know, uh, good at everything, but not like the world's best at any one of them. Sure. You know, um, I think an important takeaway for this video that I think will help a lot of viewers, especially from your perspective, you know, John does awesome training and he is such a talented guy in that regard. And he's had, he's, he has also received a ton of training. Uh, an another takeaway is that the average person, just Joe Blow, which would be me, all of us, right? We're just regular people, right? What can a regular person do in their everyday life to sort of integrate that into, I mean, especially, let's face it, like money's tight, yeah. right? So sometimes people can't spend money on a lot of random things. So would you encourage the average person to just go, hey, here's my rifle, here's my pistol, maybe here's my shotgun, and just kind of focus on that, that idea of just being three platforms, pistol, rifle, shotgun, and maybe pick a good tool and just learn it and use it well and just really get familiar with that one gun and if you know yeah I, I think that's good but what I'd also add to it is uh, train differently <laughs> as well uh, if you want to train or if you want to carry guns to protect life that means you're interested in preserving life way to go good job poets uh, but that also means you man you're more likely to even need medical get good medical training uh, if you get in a fight the fight will not feel like the flat range. It won't feel like that pistol one class you've taken 12 times over with all these different instructors. You're taking the same pistol one or two class. It's like repeating the fifth grade over and over and never really going past it. Uh, if you get in a fight, it's probably gonna be in and around structures, movie theaters, coffee shops, gas stations, your work, your home, which means everything's a room clearing problem. Parking garage. Get some one man whatever. room clearing tactics. That's exponentially uh you know more important than retaking pistol pistol one and pistol two it's foundational you need that but the fight doesn't come down to the the gun or the the necessary skill with it it comes down to tactics and mindset that's why we were talking before of well here's you know whoever bad guy is he kills the cop how is it that he keeps killing the cop is he have a better training than the cop and I'm like man no the cops get more firearms training well how is that and and really the answer is the bad guys are maximizing tactics. That's what it is, right? Right, right spot, right timing. Uh, they're ambushing, taking them by surprise. Uh, and so that's the stuff that we need to maximize this too. So don't just hang out thinking it's all about the weapon system and even the shooting of that weapon system on the flat range. Really, it's an altercation in real space and time and understanding how criminal psychology, uh, you know, understanding criminal psychology, uh, how bad guys think, how they fight, uh, and figuring out how to not be a target uh, and how to wiggle your way out of those ambushes to set a really quick field expedient counter ambush of your own. Now we're really talking about the fight winning stuff. Pistol fundamentals, th that's great. Yay, guns and be accurate and fast. And once you check that block, get some tactics training. Get some, ta it's the next level. And most folks just stop at the gun. You get the gun. This is the gun. Like it all comes down to, Oh, I don't know if I don't get the right stipple job. I'm just, you know, and you're not going to win. <laughs> you're already picturing the chalk outline of your body and your weeping wife. Of like, why didn't he? Choose? Why didn't he get his gun stippled? <laughs> <laughs> why did he get the RMR? <laughs> if only he would have had a red dot side, he would have lived. He would have lived. It's it's not coming. Down. It's not about fast shooting and accurate shooting. It's about fast seeing and fast thinking, and then it's fast shooting. But the first two are more important. That's a really good point. Uh, actually, several good valid points. 
Another point I think really plays into this gripe well too. Think about, you know, a lot of our dads and grandpas. I mean, I, I was raised in a hunting family. I've been hunting for a long time and everything like that. And you always remember, okay, what happens, right? Grandpa's got his one trusty hunting rifle that he uses all the time. And you know that every time Grandpa picks up that gun and points it at a game animal, that game animal's dropping, okay? Mm -hmm. He is familiar with that rifle. It is sighted in. He knows, he knows that it is two and a half inches high at 100 yards and that he can aim at anything out to 300 and make the shot. He knows that rifle inside and out. And he knows where that bullet is going to go at any range. And he's familiarized himself with that one rifle. And a lot of times, there's something to be said, I believe, about yeah. that type of idea. It's good. A hunting situation is really, it's a different thing. You're not talking a game animal that shoots back, right? Okay, which is just more of John's wheelhouse is, is <laughs> things that shoot back. But from my perspective, shooting a lot of animals and uh, hunting, you know, from a very young age, that's one thing I always observed about my parents and grandparents was their ability to take a tool and go out and perform the job and put the round exactly where they want to put it. And that comes from familiarizing themselves intimately with their favorite rifle. It's okay to have a favorite gun. You don't have to have an entire room of guns, an entire collection of guns, an entire safe of guns. You don't even have to have more than one gun as long as the one rifle is your rifle and you treat that rifle as your 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 brother, your your you know, extension of your body, choose something and stick to it. I yeah, think that's an the, important thing. Somebody in the comments is already there typing it out right now. They're being like, "Don't fear the man." The Bruce Lee quote: "Don't fear the man with a thousand kicks. Fear the man who practiced that one kick a thousand times, or maybe it was ten thousand. Someone, you commenters, it's a lot of kicks. You'll you'll correct me. <laughs> no, that's a valid point, though. I mean, yeah. th there is something to be said. Now we do live in a society. Uh, and I would say we're lucky to live in a society where, as a culture, I believe the American culture, the American mindset, you know, us gun guys, right? We live in this culture where we love to have instant gratification. We love to have the, oh, cool, what's the newest thing that Joe Blow's using or, or whoever's using this, using that. We follow trends. We keep up with the Joneses. And it's really easy for us to go, oh, well, you know, I know I've got my CZ Scorpion, but now I've got to have this MP5, or I've got to have this, I've got to have that. And we tend to pigeonhole ourselves into the mindset of, hey, I want to have this because it's cool, and it's okay to have a given firearm or something just because it's cool and just because you like it. But I believe what John is trying to say, and I, and I believe I'm definitely understanding where he's coming from, is that don't be afraid to... It's okay to have exposure to a little bit of everything, but pick a platform to really master and really understand the intricacies of, you know, have that one gun that you know when you grab it, you're going to be able to do any job, whether it's take down a deer or, you know, defend yourself. Find something that, that fits all of the needs that you have and learn it well and just make it a part of you. And that's, that's the good. takeaway. That's good. Uh, maybe of like, because we're talking about two different complete mindsets and I don't necessarily care to like, maybe you're a collector and you're like, I hear what John said. I don't really care. Or maybe what I really shoot. like, what I really like is this Henry rifle. I mean, the lines, it's just beautiful. And I'm like, if that's, if that's what you're pumped about, then rock on, man. That That's cool. I don't care, but yay for you. Yay for that. I, I, it, that's fine. If you are interested in actual fighting, then maybe take your tastes and don't let that influence the bottom line of how good are you at fighting with something. So now it's time to put tastes aside as the collector when you start talking about protection. It's not about favorite. It's not about how it feels in your hand, like our other gun gripe video. Sure. It, it, it's more about those other variables. And maybe if you're a fighter uh, or you're interested in being a better protector, a better fighter, but you've kind of naturally defaulted into collection thinking that that was what was going to get the uh, game, you know, that was going to get the job done of like, all right, great. You got 82 rifles. How many can you shoot at once? It's kind of like, oh, of them, crap. How many I of them are you a, good with? I wanted to be a good fighter, but really I just collected a bunch of guns of like, ah, d no, sell a bunch of guns now and get training, get training. You know, um, a good, a good example is like a race car driver. Okay. There, there's many race car drivers that, own let's just say maybe they have a garage full of like classic cars i mean they got some cool old cars they've got maybe a couple of modern sports cars they ride around in just for fun or whatever but you better believe when that guy gets behind the wheel of that race car to do his job that's the car he's focused on driving is that race car the one that brings home the bread the one that he wins the race 
the one that make, makes him his living, earns him his keep. So it's okay to enjoy things as they are aesthetically, just as they stand. But I think the big takeaway, and we don't really get this perspective very often on the channel, so that's why it's great to have John in on this, because his perspective is very, very much different. I wouldn't say vastly different than our perspective, but because he is a trainer and also because he is so well-trained, it, it does provide, I believe, a mental clarity that is oftentimes not provided to some of us when we, we get into one sort of one-track mind. We get into this, oh, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're collecting this, collecting that. Oh, I'm going to buy a hunting rifle. I'm going to buy a... I'm going to buy my 9 millimeter carbine, personal defense, this, this and that, blah, blah, whatever. But having the perspective of, hey, this is a tool and I need to know it inside out, um, that's something that some of us sometimes don't have the mental oh. clarity to really just focus on. I think it's a focus thing, sure. for sure. That's good. But uh, yeah, thanks for sitting in on this video, John. We really, really appreciate you. Um, we hope that you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. We could go on and on about this, but I think y'all get the point uh, that, you know, stick a, pick a tool and stick to it. Uh, but thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure you check out John Lovell's YouTube channel. If you have any questions, hit him up. John, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, man. Guys, fun. expect more content, much more on the way. See you soon.